Hello everyone. In this video, we will talk about text encoding. This step in the pipeline is very important because it affects the behavior of the language model. Language models are not trained directly on text. If you take a transformer model, you cannot give it a sentence, for example, how are you, and train it. This is not possible. Instead, transformers work on numbers. If this time I feed this list of numbers to the model, it will understand it better. Converting text to numbers is what we call encoding. And it can be achieved with these methods. We have character level encoding, word level encoding, and byte pair encoding. Let's compare these methods. I will use this sentence as an example. Here is a table that summarizes the comparison between the three methods. Let's start with the sequence length. The character level encoding has the highest length, while the word level encoder has the lowest. The sentence is split into characters in the case of the character level encoding, and in the case of the word level encoding, it was split by word while the BPE algorithm divides the sentence in between. So here sometimes you will get words, sometimes you get subwords, etc. The vocabulary size is the number of tokens that you will extract from your dataset. These numbers will vary depending on your use case. Generally, character level encoders have very small vocabularies, while word level encoders especially if you use multiple languages, will have the biggest vocabulary. You should always aim to find a compromise between the vocabulary size and the sequence length. Generally, if the vocabulary size increases, then the sequence length will decrease, and vice versa. We can see this behavior in the table. For the character level encoder, we have a small vocabulary and as a result the sequence length is big we don't want this because working with very large sequences will fill the context window of the model very quickly on the other hand the word level encoder uses a very big vocabulary this is good because the sequence length now is small but the problem is that this is computationally expensive to run because you will have very big matrices, it will slow down the training significantly. This leaves us with the BPE algorithm. The great thing about it is that we can control the size of the vocabulary based on our hardware and data we work with. Now let's try to understand this algorithm. BPE stands for byte pair encoding and this is an algorithm designed to compress text into a small sequence. Let's see how it works through this example. Let's start with this sequence of text. The first step is to convert it to a list of bytes. After that, we compute the number of times each pair appears in the sequence. For example, 97, 97, this pair occurs four times in this sequence. After computing the number of occurrences, we will try to find the max pair and we will replace it with a new token. I chose 666 because it doesn't exist in the vocabulary. And then what I will do, I'll just replace 97,97 with this new token. The step that we performed here is called a merge step and we can continue from there. We will take this list of bytes we'll do the same thing. We will compute the number of occurrences. We will search for the pair that has the maximum number of occurrences and we will replace it with a new token. And this is the second merge that we performed and we can perform other merges if we need. As I said before, the byte pair encoding allows you to define how many merges you want to perform so that you can control the size of the, the vocabulary. So if you want to perform just a merges, you can do that. Once you reach that last merge, then the algorithm will stop and you will get your vocabulary. Finally, I want to share with you these links if you want to read more about the BPE algorithm. 
you have wikipedia articles youtube videos and uh, this github repository that we will use in the coding section and this is exactly what we are going to do now before showing you the notebook go to my github repository and pull the latest changes that i pushed i am changing this repository regularly so make sure that you have the latest changes and i mentioned this min bpe repository it was created by andre karpathy it will allow us to use the bpa algorithm efficiently without making it ourselves but i made sure to link andre's video because he explained the bpa algorithm very very well so here i opened vs code and here you can see that we have two notebooks instead of just one i want you to open the first notebook because i forgot to do something in the previous video if you scroll down here i added a new cell that will store the text sequence in the output folder make sure to create this folder if you don't have it because it is ignored i have already done this so and i have rerun this notebook and if i open the output folder you can see that i have the sequence text so please make sure to rerun the notebook in order to generate this file because we will need it in the second notebook now close the first one and open the second notebook and this is exactly what we are doing so please load the sequence of text here are the number of characters that are in this text sequence with the data that i have here as i said i am using the min bpe repository sadly this project you cannot just use pip install because it wasn't added to the pypy repository but i made sure to clone it and i kept just the scripts that we need so they are already included so if you pulled the latest changes you should be able to to have access to this uh, repository because i need to import the min bpe to the notebook i have added this cell here i used the sys module to add the parent directory to python's system path if you don't do this then python will, will not be able to recognize where does the basic tokenizer exist so here we are importing the basic tokenizer from min bpe there are many many more tokenizers that you can use but for me um, i mean the basic tokenizer is enough so let's just use it here you create an instance of the basic tokenizer you take that object and you call the train method the train method expects two things it expects the text sequence this is the string that we exported from the first notebook and the vocabulary size this is what i said in the slides you can configure the bpa algorithm to give you an exact vocabulary size it's not like using words or character level encoders this one you can customize it however you like so let's just run this this will take i think one to two minutes it depends on the size of your data set for me i have uh, one million four hundred thousand characters if you have more uh, if you have 10 million 100 million that that will inc you will you will need to wait more so i will wait for this to finish and i will come back i am back and as you can see training the tokenizer took one minute 51 seconds now we can inspect the vocabulary the tokenizer has this vocab field if i run this it will give me the content of the vocabulary these are the tokens that we will use to encode the the sequence of text and here the great thing about this is that it was able to pick up my name because it was occurring a lot in the data in the data set that i have so as you can see um this is this is this is promising so make sure to to look at the the vocabulary just to make sure that there are no problems and then you can continue so here we can test the tokenizer here i have this simple string and as i said here i am using the Darija language but you can do you can change this to to your language if you like just make sure that the data set that you started with contains the same characters for example if i if i speak chinese and i used a data set that contains only chinese characters then if you use other characters if you want to use that encoder to encode english text it will not work because the tokenizer has not seen any english characters 
okay so make sure that you use the tokenizer for the, spe the specific use case that you are trying to to solve so if i take this string and encode it it will give me this list of tokens so i can take this this is exactly what i did and i need to make sure that if i decode the same list i should get the the string that i started with and this is exactly what we what we got now let's continue here in this section i am talking about special tokens i am going to add them to my vocabulary why because i will need to use them in the fine tuning step i know we we did not reach that step yet but this is very important we need to have this because the model will use these tokens in the fine tuning step you can see that here for example we have this token that is called end of text this if the model outputs this token it will stop generating tokens currently if we train the model we will get a base model it will never stop from generating tokens why because in the data set we don't have this token but in the fine tuning step we will create a data set that will contain these special tokens to train the model to stop for example generating the response or to use the start and end of text we have this separator if it encounters characters that it has never seen we will use the unknown token so this is why we need to add these special tokens so let's just do that you can see that here you have this special tokens field from the tokenizer we can basically just give it a dictionary and we will, we will make sure to save the the tokenizer this is the last step so that we don't repeat these steps every single time and here what you can do so you can take the tokenizer and encode the sequence text i did that and i got 618,000 tokens this is very it's not that bad but if we could add more that will be even better and this number we are going to use this in the training and validation steps if you are familiar with open source lar uh, large language models you will see that they were trained on a big chunk of the internet and the training set contains trillions of tokens but because this is a small project i mean having 618,000 tokens it's, it's not that bad so when we start training the model we will see if this is enough or not the last step as i said is saving the model here i have created a new folder inside the output directory and here we have the tokenizer and as you can see min bpe was able to to add these special tokens that we added manually as well as the 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 other tokens okay so we have everything here and i will show you when we start training the model how to load this tokenizer we arrived at the end of this video in the next one, we will create the transformer model from scratch. See you next time.